What's up, everyone? I'm the Gojiru Philosopher, and I just had my first Muay Thai fight. Let me show you how it went. In my video about starting over, I mentioned that I've been training Muay Thai for a little over a year now. I still feel like I'm a beginner at times, but I like to think I've definitely been improving, and I even get asked to help show newer students a few techniques every now and then. Still, in over a year, I hadn't gotten in the ring, at least not for Muay Thai. While I'm by no means aiming to turn pro, I do very much enjoy competing. I've taken part in several Kyokushin tournaments, and even got to have a friendly exhibition match in an actual ring. One day, though, Coach Andy told us that he was setting up an interclub with another Muay Thai gym, and he asked if I wanted to take part. This was my chance. What is an interclub? Simply put, it's kind of like a dojo storm, but friendlier. <laughs> Aspiring Muay Thai fighters often get their first experience at smokers, exhibition matches that don't go on an amateur record. The intensity of a smoker is lower than an amateur match, and some hosts don't allow knockouts, elbows, or other riskier techniques. The goal of a smoker is to get newbies, like me, some more experience in a more live-fire situation that is a step above the normal sparring you would do in your gym. And an inner club is kind of like a smoker, but between just two gyms. My gym, Mook Boxing, was going to bring a group of our fighters down to Ringcraft Muay Thai in Portland to train and to fight. This was the perfect opportunity for me to step into the ring without too much risk. The inner club was going to be a little bit less formal than some smokers. After all, our gyms are friends, and friends don't give friends CTE. And so, my training began for my first real Muay Thai fight. I had about a month and a half to prepare for the inner club. Since it was going to be a less formal event, matches were going to be made day of, so there was no opportunity for me to study my opponent beforehand and get a sense of their style. Fortunately for me, that's how I'm already used to it, thanks to the Kyokushin tournament format, where you fight who's there on the day. So instead, my focus for training was on general conditioning and honing my personal style. As I mentioned previously, I gravitate toward a style called Muay Kao, meaning I like to clinch and I like to knee. I've always preferred infighting, mostly because my hips aren't flexible enough to consistently kick high, but the addition of getting to clinch is a game changer for me. In fact, for fellow Gojiru Karateka considering getting some Muay Thai experience, I highly recommend clinching. In an upcoming video, I want to explain why so many people believe that Sanchin Kata, as well as many other Goju Kata, are intended to teach certain aspects of clinch fighting. But I also bet that most of us haven't practiced clinching except against other Karateka, and there are some aspects that you really can't experience until you've dealt with a really experienced clincher. But that's for another video, so back to my preparation. Coach Andy actually gave me permission to video some of my training leading up to the inner club. We started this training, like every training, with some jump rope, a classic warm-up. What we do from there varies, but this time we moved into some simple pad work in the form of single kicks. After that, it's time for drilling specific combos. I take my glasses off for this part, and my vision is, uh, not great. <laughs> So I have to really focus on both looking and listening to understand what we're doing. Fortunately, once I'm actually doing the drills, I can use sound cues, touch, and motion to make up for the fact that it's all very blurry. After working the combo, we also do a few rounds of free pad work, where the pad holder calls out whatever they'd like and you have to do it. Whenever I'm the one holding pads, I shamelessly steal combos that other people have shown me and remix them if I need to make something new. Then, after our pad rounds, we close out with some sparring. Every one of us approaches a spar differently, but personally I make sure I clinch all of my sparring partners at least once. For newer people, I also can't help but give them a few tips when I do. After all, it's no fun clinching them if they don't know how to put up at least some resistance. This time in particular, I was trying to work on marching forward without rushing in too recklessly. During the sparring, Andy pops in occasionally to give feedback. Here he is giving me some pointers on a position I ended up clinching with Danny. Then turning to Danny and showing him how to counter what he just showed me. Fair is fair, I guess. My cow fighting style requires a lot of stamina and conditioning compared to others due to relying on constant isometric tension. For taller people like me, forcing someone into the clinch also lets us lean our weight on them and tire their arms out. 
but I had to make sure that I built the stamina to last. So on top of our normal classes, those of us intending to participate in the inner club stepped up our intensity during training. Andy had us kicking pads 50 or 100 times on each leg, or even more for people who were late, pretty regularly. We routinely stayed late to do extra bike sprints to work on our gas tank. And of course, we did a lot of sparring. I also worked very technical. In addition to regular drills and pad work, Andy and Bobby showed me a couple tricks and techniques that I focused on single-mindedly in clinch practice. In particular, I was working on something Andy calls the zip tie, where I use my arms to press on the sides of an opponent's neck or torso, allowing me to scoot my hips back to get the range for straight-in knees. A week before the inner club, we were all called up to do a special strength and conditioning class. Coach Joe had put together a circuit based on the principles of contrast training, combining resistance training with plyometric exercise. Then, in the final week, we put all of those pieces together. By this point, my game plan was pretty settled. I was going to march forward, knees and hands up to guard, keep or kick my opponent if he tried to back away, and eventually, make him clinch me. I might have to take a little bit of punishment getting through his range, but once I got in, I would smother him, knee him, and maybe even sweep him if I could. The morning of the inner club, we all showed up early. Once everyone was at the gym, we rolled out. Portland is about a three hour drive, so we hit the road by 9 a.m. in order to arrive in time for Ringcraft's noon training. Ringcraft has a really welcoming crew. Training with them was intense, it was technical, but most of all, it was a lot of fun. And after working up a sweat, it was time for... More sparring with their head coach, Greg. Everyone got a turn, and he showed off why he's their head coach. But okay, at last, it was finally time for our fights. We brought 10 fighters down, which meant that we were actually a bit pressed for time, since we wanted to make sure everyone got home in time for at least a late dinner. Andy and Greg decided to have us do two rounds, two minutes each. This worked perfectly for me. The Kyokushin experience that I have is also with two minute rounds, with the possibility of an extension of one or two minutes. So here's my fight. Yeah, boom. Yeah. 
the moment, and then from there you go right there once again. Now, you just hold a little bit more and use a rope, right? Uh, like, like it's your friend. You, you push them in there, you lean into it a little bit, and then from there you can go ahead and work the knee a little bit. Beautiful, right? But again, you know, I want you to go ahead and kick a little bit more on the outside, and then from there, boom, use the teeth. Use the teeth. So kind of load them in a little bit, and then from there, go ahead and wrap it. Make sure you're marching with your knees, you know what I mean? So if you move away, you can teeth. Right, but if, if he rains, you can go ahead and just grab. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just trying to install him. Yeah. Oh, and that one. Good game. Good game. Beautiful. Good game. No, let go of the leg now. Yeah. Hey. Hey. No, boy. Bring it right on down. Bring it. Nice Bring your right arm to your hip. Work in the clutch. Move your arms. Good down. Right. There you go. Down. Put them down. Yeah. Ricky, bring your right arm to your hip. Work in the clutch. There you go. Yeah. Right, guys. Right. There you go. You gotta listen to what I'm saying. Don't just keep your arms in one spot. You gotta work. Put his arms down. Right arm down. Good. Tap the arm to the arm to your hip. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but I had a lot of fun. And since this is going to be a regular event between our two gyms, I'm definitely looking forward to next time. I'm not a full-time Muay Thai fighter now. I mean, for one, I'm still planning on competing in Kyokushin tournaments, and I do still have grad school to attend, so I can't get too beat up in the meantime. But this definitely won't be the last time I fight in Muay Thai. Thank you all for coming with me on this fun journey. Up next, I am working on that video about Clinching's connection to Sanchen Kata, so stay tuned for that. If you want to see that when it comes out, you should subscribe to this channel. Maybe even turn notifications on. Many thanks go to my coaches at Mookboxing for both the training and the opportunity for this inner club. I've already mentioned Andy, Bobby, and Joe, but I should also thank Coach Domino, the gym cat, for training my flexibility and providing moral support by allowing me to give him belly pets. See you in the next one. Say hi. Hi. Hi, Cottontail. Okay, I put you down. I know you don't like being held like that too much. <laughs>